Hello, I'm joined today by Mark Steinman from A Lot, and we're going to discuss the importance of deep packet inspection in 5G networks and ways in which 5G security can be addressed. Okay, Mark, so let's start off with DPI. Why do we need it in 5G? So, hello, Ken, happy to be with you, of course. And um, I think, first of all, we need to agree what DPI is. Of course, it stands for deep packet inspection, but in reality, it's evolving technology to help you speed to solve some problems. And these problems are really about building the context of subscriber consisting of application, device, location, and other network characteristics such as service plan. So since for the 5G is all about service and subscriber quality of experience, we believe that getting the specific subscriber and service context is extremely important. Okay, but what about encryption? Doesn't that neutralize the advantages of DPI? Uh, not at all. It is true that due to encryption, it becomes much harder to look into the packet. And of course, the payload is encrypted even today. You know, 80% or more of the traffic is already encrypted. But as I said, DPI is evolving. And in a lot, we have uh, various uh, algorithms, you know, heuristic-based behavioral analysis, machine learning algorithms, to make sure we are getting sufficient visibility and insights. Also, the depthness of the insight required is different from use case to use case. For example, if you are talking about application-based charging, of course, you need to get a very specific and accurate application specification. But if you are talking about congestion management, it is sufficient to understand the class of service. It's enough if we know whether it's streaming video, voice call, or browsing, in order to apply proper prioritization decision. So using the technologies that a lot possess, and we continue to invest and develop, we are confident that we will be able to provide the required uh, value. And I would refer to DPI's next generation DPI technology in this case. Okay, a lot has been said about application awareness, but is it really so important? Isn't there enough bandwidth for everyone? Application awareness is definitely not only about you know, bandwidth limitation. As we discussed previously, for charging use cases, uh, whether it's application-based charging or SLA-based charging, like gaming, you know, when CSP would like to charge premium for low latency provided, uh, you know, so it's important not only for the bandwidth, but also for, from other aspects. But if we will go uh, for the bandwidth point, there is never too much bandwidth. Uh, the CSPs are business organizations, and they will not build something that they cannot eventually uh, to monetize. And the monetization can come either through new use cases like AR, you know, uh, augmented reality or virtual reality, or assisted driving, or from different business models. For example, you know, charging over the top layer for dedicated slices. So while slicing is one of the key 5G uh, promises within the EMBB slice, within the consumer internet slice, somebody will still need to classify different applications to understand application quality of our experience in prioritized application and services you know, based on that. So while we are focusing on this um, conversation on 5G network, we need to remember, remember that in reality, 4G is still and will continue to carry till 2025, more traffic, more volume than a, a 5G networks. And of course, we'll remain with that you know, for many years ahead. So overall, uh, you definitely need to get you know, subscriber application awareness. But what term um, DPI add latency and which might negate any value that it might bring? Uh, it's definitely true that low latency is another key promise uh, you know, of 5G architecture. And a lot specialize, it's uh, basically our know-how to introduce a minimal latency and only for the traffic of users who are utilizing or using that to another service. So generally we are talking about below 200 microseconds of latency, and it's only for two, three first packets of uh, user flow. That's in reality, uh, the legacy impact that we can uh, introduce is really neglectable. Okay. Well, a broader question now. What are the important networking trends in 5G that you see, and where is traffic management going to be important? Well, uh, we expect the volume of traffic to continue and grow, you know, say 30, 40% year over year. 
basically doubling you know, every two years. By the way, I think it's important to mention that uh, Molo is dead, and then the, the processing power is not growing that fast. So there is definitely you know, a need for other solutions. And on top of that, um, low latency traffic is growing. So I previously mentioned uh, gaming and augmented reality, but there is also a video conferencing. All these applications are requiring low latency. Another trend that we see on the market is related to the multi-cloud deployments, uh, where basically core run elements or applications can be deployed on different clouds, whether these clouds are public or private. So in this heterogeneous environment, with continuous uh, growing traffic, uh, different requirements by application and different deployment scenarios, we believe that CSP will be looking for comprehensive, unified the traffic management system, analytics, and network protection solutions, again, coming from, a, let's say, one vendor, which can provide it end-to-end. -end. Okay. okay, so let's turn our attention to 5G security. Why is it even more important to protect 5G networks? I mean, isn't security baked into 5G networks anyway? And why do CSPs need third-party solutions? It is uh, definitely true that 5G is uh, more robust uh, than 4G when we are talking about consumer security. And you know, it's focusing on subscriber identity management and privacy. And uh, there are also standards covering, uh, you know, securing the core of the network itself. However, the security of the network from external threats, and you know, by external, it's both threats coming from the internet, you know, from the public networks, and internal threats coming from the access network, you know, around. And uh, these are not standardized today in 3GPP environment, okay? So there's no standards. There are some guidelines coming from GCMA mainly, and maybe other organization. But again, I'm repeating, there are no standards on how to protect the user plane, for example, of the network, when there is a, a volu volumetric DDoS, denial of service uh, attack. There is also no standard on how to deal with uh, signaling attacks uh, on the counter plane. So to implement this kind of protection, the solution provided by uh, core uh, NAPs are, are not sufficient. And we believe that the CSPs should be looking for a best of the breed solutions uh, to resolve this issue. Okay, but aren't uh, 4G solutions good enough for 5G? I mean, what is so different about the 5G architecture well, that requires new solutions? Well, uh, 5G is uh, very different from 4G in several uh, architectural aspects. Uh, first of all, it's distributed and not centralized. There are many local breakouts to the internet. It's driven by the automation and orchestration tools, which you know by themselves based on uh, a lot of open source software. Uh, it is supposed to support a million of IoT devices, which are designed with the, let's call it no security approach in mind, or some would claim with anti-security approach in mind, right? In each one of these unsecured devices is capable of issuing a gigabit attack towards the network in 5G. So the attacks now can come not only from you know, outside, but they, call, they also can be originated inside uh, the network. So the, and again, the scale of the network is very different. We used to have, you know, the need was to protect a small number of big central sites, and today we are talking about need to protect many small sites. So all in all, a 5G security perimeter is much louder, larger than the 4G one. And thus it's, a very, it's much more dangerous. Uh, so some approaches that work in the past will miss attacks now. So basically, you know, for the right architecture or for the new architecture, you need to get the new tool set uh, to do the job. Well, DDoS and botnets, of course, can impact latency and performance, but won't inline mitigation also slow down traffic? Well, we, we, it's related you know, to our previous question regarding uh, uh, latency, and you're right, inline mitigation will affect to a certain degree uh, the latency. However, we believe that the value that we are providing to the customer, which is much more accurate and faster attack mitigation, is significantly more important. So we are using our technology, we are able to detect more uh, attack types, that offline solution, and we are able to mitigate these attacks within seconds. 
So why we, again, uh, from a latency perspective, we are introducing a minimal latency, as we discussed previously, below 200 microseconds, only for two or three uh, packets. You know, overall, it's insignificant and, you know, impact to the traffic, which comes with a lot of value. Right, well, we've covered a lot of ground, and but given that all that we've discussed, what is your view in terms of 5G? Is it more a challenge or an opportunity? So I believe uh, it is different uh, as any new development, any new architecture. Uh, 5G comes with its own uh, complexities or, you know, uh, topics, the challenges that need to be resolved. But uh, for a lot, uh, you know, given the technology that we have, both in traffic management and analytics and in security, I really believe it's a great opportunity. And, you know, we are uniquely positioned in the market in order to resolve these challenges and provide the right value to the operators. Okay, thank you, Mark, for sharing those insights and perspectives. It's been great speaking to you. Thank you. Thank you, Ken.